as expected, it's getting more and more comfortable around San Antonio. It's 55 degrees out at the airport right now. It's 50 in Pleasanton, 49 in Gonzales, 44 in Kerrville, and it's 55 in New Braunfels. Here's a look at uh, the forecast. We're at 70, we'll be at 70 degrees in the afternoon. Mostly sunny skies. Winds from the west at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Clear and chilly conditions later on tonight with temperatures falling back down into the 50s. As we take a look ahead in the forecast, mid 70s tomorrow. And then on Monday morning, we'll have a chance for some isolated rain, but generally we're just going to be warming up. 80 degrees by Tuesday. Front moving through early Wednesday morning. That'll drop our temperature back down into the 40s throughout the day on Wednesday. It'll be windy with areas of light showers uh, and will be really uh, starting to warm up by the end of the weekend. But still, tail of two seasons here, feeling like <laughs> spring on Tuesday, winter on Wednesday. The best of both worlds. The best of both worlds indeed. Thank you, Sarah. All right, thank you, Sarah. We are wrapping up our live coverage at the KSAT Corral happening downtown right now and all throughout the morning. That's right. We're going to check in with Mark Austin, Leslie Mouton, and our Alicia Barrera. They are live out there. It's a live look right now. Live it? look. Look at all the fun out there. We got food. We have festivities. We have family fun. You guys? <laughs> there they are. Hey, I found them. <laughs> Uh, there's know there's no hat store here, um, <laughs> but I'm going to work on it. I have a year to work on it because I am certain we are going to do this again. We are doing a whole makeover on you, dude. We are yeah, doing the whole makeover. So the Western makeover. We need to take him to like Herb's Hat Shop and then do yeah, some. Get some, some we, we will make it happen. But the best thing about today is beautiful weather, huge crowd, everybody in an awesome mood. I can't think of a better start to the rodeo season. I mean, we could not have ordered better weather than this, and our viewers are fabulous. They are so sweet and so loyal, and to get to hug and meet so many people who get up with us every day, it's been such a blessing. My favorite part, again, just seeing, uh, like you, Leslie, meeting everyone. Yes. Um, this food is just amazing. The last taco, I think, yeah, they're out of tacos, but let me tell you, I think everyone here got one except for maybe us. I didn't get one. That's okay. That's okay. So we have okay. all the energy. Well, you guys, stick with us here on KSAT, also KSAT.com. We're going to be live streaming. It's going to be a good time. So I'm David Elder. <laughs> Join me as I travel to restaurants and share recipes from friends from all across the Lone Star State. Today's episode of Texas Eats is all about barbecue. We're going out to the Texas Hill Country to check out one of the best barbecue spots in the Lone Star State. Plus, we're going to hit up a food truck that's serving up some Midwest barbecue unlike anything else in this part of Texas. And HEB's with us today, showing us how to cook up some steaks and how to make cornbread in a cast iron pan. But first, we're going to check out a spot that's serving up some Bloody Marys and putting the bar in barbecue. Let's go inside the pig pen. Right here with me is Chris Conger. He is the pit master owner out here at Smoke Shack. You got a meat market and we're out here at the Pig Pen, which is a bar serving up some really fun and interesting barbecue items. We got a sandwich in front of us. You said this is a, a, a the Texas uh, hot chicken sandwich. You know, it's play off of the Nashville hot chicken. To spice it up a little bit, we use our, our chili piquin oil that we make in house. And that's, well, chili piquins are native to Texas. So that's why we call it the Texas hot chicken sandwich. So the chicken right here has that Pekin oil on there, that chili Pekin, and then you got your bread sourced from a local bakery yep. and some other great items on there as well. Yeah. Pickles, slaw. Oh, yeah. I got to take a bite of this. You got to. Mm. Oh, wow. Dude, it's spicy. Yeah. <laughs> it's spicy. You're not joking, but it's a little sweet as well. Yeah. Everything about this works. You got a really nice crisp on the outside of the chicken to the fries, right? It's still tender and juicy on the inside. The bread from Breadbox is just a winner. It's awesome. And it's so fun, and it's compact enough to where you might have to eat two of these. Who knows? <laughs> that, thing, that thing is only $3.50.
$3.50. You're definitely going to want to get two of these. That's seven bucks. It's okay. You can spend seven dollars and get two sandwiches. Yeah. That's fun. So a Nashville hot chicken sandwich. It's covered in sauce. You got the pickles. You got some of the slaw if you want to throw it on there. But it's all about the spice that's on the chicken. This one is a Texas hot chicken sandwich and it does not disappoint. A chili piquin, it's native to Texas, covered in that oil from that pepper on there. So you got the spice, the fry on the outside's perfect, nice and salty, but tender chicken on the inside. It is so good and it's so Texas. The actual link itself, we make it, so it's an all natural casing, beef and pork blend. Uh, we put that on top of a little bed of chopped brisket some slaw on top, some onions and bacon, and some uh, a little bit of mustard. Woo, that sounds interesting. This is wild. And the cool thing is you make these, like you're making the hot dog, you know what I mean? And the, to have that much input onto the product that you're actually selling, they must feel really good. We got a great crew. Uh, the meat market guys are always coming up with fun stuff to, to link up. Our sausages are great. I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's a lot of work. Making sausage is not easy, but um, it pays off. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. Then Here we go. Yeah, I'll take a bite of this. Almost Almost <laughs> Woo! Dude! Great snap on the outside of that link. The meat that's in there as well, everything couples together with those that raw red onion on top that really cuts through everything as well. So you're getting all the acidity, of course, the mustard, the red onion. It's the perfect blend. It's like the perfect barbecue bite. That is amazing. I'm gonna take another bite. This is really good. And talk about a wild hot dog. This is probably one of the craziest things I've ever eaten. You got the coleslaw that's on top, the crispy bacon pieces. You got all the different barbecue cut in the middle, plus the hot dog that they're making right over here at the meat market. And then the roll itself, has a, it's soft and it has a nice butteriness to it. Everything really works well and it's a great balance of flavor. Brisket is king in Texas, so you know you gotta have it. And this is the ultimate combination of all those things into one. It's the brisket Bloody Mary. It's, it's the most popular drink that we have. Just seemed fitting next door to Smoke Shack. So this is a drink that you serve, say, during like a brunch period or anything like that, like during the weekend? You know, people buy this all day. I mean, we'll, have, <laughs> we'll have, you know, you would think it'd be a morning drink or mid-afternoon, but uh, I mean, we have, we have customers buying that thing at 10 p.m. Really? Yeah, it's a little, it's a snack. Yeah, this is like a snack with your drink. All right, I'm gonna get a piece of this brisket. You grab this other little piece right there. You're serving up a Texas hot chicken sandwich. You got this wild barbecue hot dog and of course the brisket Bloody Mary. So cheers to you, sir. Cheers, you guys man. are making some great stuff out here. And of course you're right next to Smoke Shack. So we'll walk on over and you get the full meal over there, but you come get some good snacks and good drinks over here. That's right. Hmm. I've seen bacon in a Bloody Mary and I've seen a chicken wing in Bloody Marys, but I've never seen brisket in a Bloody Mary. And they're serving it up out here at the pig pen. It's a great Bloody Mary to start, has a nice salted rim on there, but then you get the really unctuous flavor coming from the brisket. So you take a sip, you could dunk your brisket in it as well, and you get the olive. It's the best blend of the two worlds together. Right next door to Pig Pan is Smoke Shack. That's the barbecue joint that's serving up all kinds of Texas favorites. You got turkey, chicken, brisket, ribs, sausage that's made in-house at a meat market that's right next door to Smoke Shack. So it's a meat market, a barbecue joint, and a bar serving up wild barbecue items. This is like the ultimate spot to come to if you're a barbecue fanatic. Now, we're heading off into the hill country to go inside one of the top barbecue spots in Texas. We're in the Texas hill country near Bernie and near Sisterdale to go inside of a barbecue joint that's making some amazing Wagyu briskets and some killer desserts. Let's see what's smoking at Blackboard Barbecue. Jake Gandolfo, the man, the myth, the legend, is here with me right now. Blackboard Barbecue, of course, you know you got to try the brisket. That's a Texas staple, but you also have the sausage, the chicken, the coleslaw, and, of course, some other sides as well that we're going to be getting into. I know this feels like something that Disneyland would want to recreate. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? To, like, create that yeah. vibe. Like, yeah. oh, Texas Hill Country? We'll make something like this. You couldn't recreate this, you know? That's kind of the point. I mean, this is a one-of deal. Like, this feel and this vibe. and. And that's before we even get to the to the food, to the to the right. smoke, right? Right in front of us. Yeah. This so is why Texas barbecue yeah. is Texas barbecue. You know, Texas, hugely brisket forward, brisket is king, right? So we wanted to take that to another level. I think Wagyu should be in everybody's face that's coming out of the great state of Texas, whether it's off the smoker or off the grill or off a flat top burger, whatever it is. It's just I'm so proud of the meat 
and so proud that it's from Texas and it really works for us. It's something that's really come to define us. It translates phenomenally on the smoker as far as the process. It's intense, absorbs so much great flavor, right, from the smoke. I'm harvesting my own wood on the property. That's right, I cut my own live oak <laughs> down before I smoke the meat. That's how hardcore we are. My smoker is an old oiler smoker that was built up in Mesquite, Texas in 1976. She's been putting the stink on it almost as long as I've been breathing air. <laughs> I mean, it's like your mama's 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 best cast iron skillet inside there. Right. So I can only take a little bit of the credit. She does all the work, right? Now, I'm not even interested in a fork and knife. I, I'm, I'm got my you sleeves are, rolled up. I was gonna say, you already got your sleeves rolled up. I'm You're going halfway in for this, there. Yeah, You're I'm going in there. for the brisket. And uh, you know, I've always been taught, best way to test a brisket, it holds up on its own weight and yeah, it pulls totally apart. Right, That's some good yeah. brisket. Yeah. The fat looks rendered perfectly. Yeah. Oh, the smell. That's how brisket should smell. Yeah. Slightly smoky, but that meat flavor and the scent is coming through. Oh, that was a nice big bite. Nice big bite. Let me get some of that bark on there. Oh yeah, now we're talking. That's it right there. Oh, yeah. mm. See, I get excited every time just watching people eat it. It's just, it's awesome. I see gals with their, their, their hair just standing right on end. I, I see guys just come to tears over this before. It's just... This is absolutely incredible. I've never used the word decadent to describe brisket. This brisket is decadent. You're sweet, my you're super sweet. This is melt in your mouth delicious. It has so much body to it, but the moment you go to chew on it, the fat, it just becomes like this little bit of like a salty vehicle to add, like run all those juicy flavors in. Yeah, yeah. And the meat yeah. is, everything's cooked perfect. Nice smoke ring around the yeah. outside as well. The bark is amazing because yeah. it's it's light. And it's not overpowering the meat. It's the perfect amount of saltiness that you want. And a little bit of pepper that you get on there. And you can tell there's something different on yeah. there too. Yeah, a little something. A little, a little something, something, something in there, yeah. Mm. I could eat that for dessert. The flavor on the outside, the bark, you can tell a little bit of salt and pepper on there. You're not gonna tell us what that spice is, but there's some kind of extra spice on it, and it melds so well with the meat on the inside and that fat flavor. This is what Texas barbecue is all about. So this is the jalapeno cheddar wild boar sausage. Yes, sir. House-made mustard. This looks like some high-quality mustard. Well, I love some good mustard. Yeah, so it got a little cardamom. Got some coriander, of course, Scheinerbach beer. It punches you with a really deep mustard flavor that you want, kind of that like that little bite. Yeah. But when you pair it with that sausage link on yeah. there, which is already so savory, right. it marries so well together. I'm this glad, is incredible. I'm glad you get it, man. I, I, I'm glad. Like, this is, that's just... good mustard. 200 years of family tradition right Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Wow. Nothing. You know what, I'm gonna try it with, without no, the mustard first, right. I go into mustard. Nothing but love, right here, man. Mm. Oh, wow. Once again, you have mastered the balance of saltiness. If you're not a venison lover, this is what you need to try. It'll turn you, right? It, it will turn yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah, is great. Yeah, yep, good. Salud. Salud. My goodness. Dude, you just got, you, got, you keep the hits coming. Blackboard Barbecue has the two sausages on the menu. They have the one wild boar sausage that has the jalapeno and the cheddar cheese inside, but then, they have a very special 200-year-old venison family recipe sausage that is cram-packed full of all different kinds of seasonings, and it has a really rich flavor to it. When you bite into it, you forget that it's venison. If you've never tried venison, you have that sausage, it'll change your whole perspective on what venison can be. I'm gonna go right for oh the back God. corner. It's got all that pecan back there. Oh yeah, you got like the little I got nut my, action going on. I got on my right technique Cheers. down. Salud, nice to see you. Oh, wow. And I love that you even went into detail and you added the little carrot on it. Yeah, just in case there was ever any questions. <laughs> yeah. so there's, what so kind there's, of cake is this? So there's no confusion. Yeah, it's a carrot <laughs> cake. Yeah. That's it's, incredible. I love it. Love it. I think it's a good one. Mm. Yeah. That's yep. a good one. Salud. Okay. That is like. A little bit of whiskey. If caramel was an actual right. like cake, right? That tastes like caramel. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's incredible. That's, that is totally it. You got it right there. <laughs> it, it is absolutely totally it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You remember when you were a kid and they used to have bake sales at school and you tried to get there as quick as you could to get the best perfect, like those crunchy but soft and gooey chocolate chip cookies. Anytime that my food can make you feel like that kid again or make you want to turn and hug your mama, for me, that is the score. That justifies everything I do, my purpose, my being as a chef. 
Well, Chef, if my mom was right here, I'd hug her. Yeah. This is absolutely incredible. Nothing feels like a good warm hug from mama like a hill country dessert. And they are doing a phenomenal job out here at Blackboard Barbecue. A carrot cake, some cookies, and some seasonal cobbler that you cannot get anywhere else. This is the real deal. Coming up next on Texas Eats, we go inside of a barbecue joint that's quickly becoming a Central Texas icon. And later in the show, we go inside of a brewery that's also serving up some of the best Tex-Mex barbecue that you can get your hands on. So don't go anywhere. Keep it tuned in right here on Texas Eats. I know brisket is king in Texas barbecue, but this next spot we're going in is making some of the best smoked turkey in town. Let's check out D. Willie's Barbecue. With me is Freddy Cruz, the man, the myth, right? You're out here making sure all this is going smoothly. And who's your pit master out here? Our pit master is my co-owner, Derek Willis. Derek Willis is a genius. This is your third location, right? This is the third location in two years. In two years? In That's two years. incredible. It's because you're producing products like this. You guys have some of the juiciest, best smoked turkey in town. Well, it's just pure turkey breast, and we smoke it for eight hours in the smoke. Eight hours? Eight hours. So I know brisket is king in Texas. Of course, when you're in the Lone Star State eating barbecue, that's the one item that you got to try. But when a place like this is cranking out this level of turkey, phenomenal. This is what you have to try when you come here. Do you know what the seasoning is? A little like simple blend? Or? It's called D. Willie's seasoning. <laughs> Everybody's got secrets. All right, well, I'm gonna try. You guys just slice this fresh, and look at this. It's just so tender. Barely even pull on it. The smoky flavor, all the seasoning, it goes to the center of the turkey breast. That is absolutely incredible. That is really good. And then, of course, you got your pickles, your onions, your jalapenos on the side. Now, if somebody's really hungry, it's lunchtime. You also got a sandwich right here. That's right, ready to go. What kind of barbecue sauces do y'all have out here? We have two different barbecue sauces. We have our mild, and then we also have our spicy. Oh, is this mild or spicy? That's the mild. Okay. <laughs> if that was spicy, you'd be in trouble. Yeah, I was like, hold on, hold on. I just put a lot on there. But you got to dress it up, the pickles, the onions. That looks incredible. I'm going to take a bite. Mm. You're in heaven? <laughs> Shut your mouth, Freddy. <laughs> that is delicious. So, Freddy won't tell me the secret, but it's just a really great blend of seasonings that's all put on the outside of their meat, plus the way that they're smoking it. It's the combination of the two together that makes this place really unique. And you know when you're in Texas, brisket is king, and you guys have some delicious brisket out here as well. I mean, look at the bark on the outside of this. Sure. Is it another secret that you can't share how you guys make this happen? Well, I can tell you it takes 24 hours to make it. Wow. Do you, can you tell me what's on the outside of it? No. D. Willie seasoning. <laughs> so Derek really has a lot of input into this whole process, right? Correct. With smoking, and that's really how this all started. Derek was cooking out of a food truck. Freddie approached him, he had some of the barbecue, loved it. He told him, if you let me work with you, we could put this into places all across town. And sure enough, here we are in 2020, they're in their third location, and the barbecue is just as good as the first day I tried it. Oh my gosh, I can't even pick it up, it's so tender. Once again, brisket, you hold it up, you pull on it, and look how it's marbling. It has that nice fat rendered inside of it, it's like a honeycomb. This is how you know it is gonna be really good brisket. Mm. Gotta love it. Oh my gosh, Damn, he's a genius, man. This is crazy. When you're eating brisket, are you a pickle and onions guy or are you like a straight brisket? You gotta have the pickles and onions. Yeah, you gotta have the And pickle. the jalapenos. I'm gonna go for a pickle on this one. Incredible brisket. Is there a certain kind of cut that y'all are using, like Angus or right. Prime? Right, these are all black Angus Prime brisket. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Right. That's how you, I mean, that's how you get that quality. And the smoke flavor on there too. Can you tell me what kind of wood you all use? Yeah, well, I'll tell you that. A mesquite and oak together. Oh, okay, so it's a blend. Yes, it's Can a blend. Can you tell me the blend? Mesquite and oak. <laughs> no, like is that's it 50-50? It. It no, that's that's it. it. Okay. I'm trying to learn the secrets here. This brisket and the turkey together is like the ultimate barbecue flavors mashed all in one place. 
really, really good. But when you wrap it all up, you want to get something sweet, you got to get some dessert, right? That's right. And you have the banana pudding that was sent from heaven. Join me right here on this spoon. It is like a pillow of banana goodness. Look at you, what he went for. Look at you. Okay. <laughs> this is insane. It is like all the flavors you love about banana pudding. You put into a blender or something, and then you made that into another kind of pudding, and then you put it in here with a custard, and then you covered it with bananas. I have no idea how that works, and you put some whipped cream in there, some Cool Whip or something. You can't have all this tasty barbecue without having a great dessert at the end. And of course, it's the banana pudding. That is the ultimate Southern Texas barbecue dessert and they're doing it so well out here. I don't even wanna know how they make it because it'll ruin the mystique, but it is delicious. It is so good. Turkey, brisket, it's not just that though. What else do you have on the menu? We also have uh, ribs and then we have sausage. We have chicken as well. Their barbecue menu is extensive and it's actually pumping out some of the best smoked chicken that you can get in San Antonio. But you have sausage, smoked chicken, turkey, brisket, and the ribs. All together, it really is just a robust menu. So you can't go to a barbecue joint and not try the sides. And over here at D. Willie's, they have some really incredible sides. They have their baked potato salad, their mustard-based potato salad. They also have their mac and cheese, their green beans, their pinto beans. Everything on here is just really, really awesome, and it goes really well with the barbecue. Coming up next on Texas Eats, we go in the kitchen with H-E-B to learn how to cook up some tomahawk steaks and bone-in pork chops. And later in the show, we go inside of a barbecue food truck that's serving up some Midwest barbecue flair. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now, we're in the kitchen with H-E-B to learn how to cook up a tomahawk steak and a bone-in pork chop with Chef Scott Tompkins. Scott, what kind of meat do you have right here in front of us? So we have our beautiful uh, beef tomahawks, and we also have our pork tomahawks. That's so, how um, you kick off rodeo. That is exactly. You want to get your hands on some steaks. Big That's how you do it. piece of thick meat. So this is about like, I mean, it's about two inches thick, maybe a little more. You can't just throw these things straight onto the grill like this. You got to season them up. So what kind of seasonings season do you have? Season them up. So we've done two different kind of seasonings, and both could work for this 100%. Okay, so for the pork tomahawk, we're going to do a toasted spice mixture that consists of our uh, tillatory black peppercorns, our little crushed red pepper, fennel seeds, juniper berries, and of course our cumin seeds. So these all get toasted in a dry pan. For the steaks, I did a chili citrus salt. So it's basically taking two pantry items. This is an ancho chili powder and any chili mix you like. Mix it with kosher salt and add orange and lemon zest to it. And the longer it sits, you can kind of actually see some of the little clumps in here. Oh, That's yeah. still some of the zest. The longer it sits, the more moisture the salt will draw out of the, of the citrus and the zest itself. And it'll become a little more dry and then it's a little more, a little more available to sprinkle instead oh of like clumping. Gosh. We're gonna do a lot of seasoning because these are very thick cuts of meat. So don't be shy. I obviously like a lot of seasoning on my... Uh... You can't really over-season or can you over-season? You want a liberal amount. So whatever liberal means to you, I would <laughs> yeah. say liberal amount. As don't crazy go, uh... as you want to get, right? Exactly, don't go chintzy on it. And uh, because we're doing a bone-in cut, you wanna let this sit out at room temperature for at least, I would say 30 to 45 minutes because if you were to take this out of the chill chest, put it right on the grill. You've got so much cold right where the bone is. By the time this is all to the perfect doneness that you like, all this bone in here where all that meat is is completely still raw. So you wanna let it sit out so everything has a chance to kind of come to room temperature and settle down. And these go onto our preheated grill and that's it. Really simple. And these are ready to rock and roll. Grill then. them up, yeah, that is it. That's all we're doing. And well, let's then do it. Just need some great cornbread to go with it. <laughs> Because it has the bone in it, you can set it up on the side of the bone. So now sometimes you have to rig this, you may have to kind of hold it up or, or, or kind of rig it against or sit it against something. Usually I can kind of rig this to where it'll stay somewhat up. Usually you can kind of wedge the bone down the grill a little bit. So wedge the bone on the side, put it up like that, and exactly. it'll cook and finish without getting any more dark. Exactly. That's a teachable moment. If I hold it, it's perfect. <laughs> so then that's it, and we're just gonna let it rest and then we'll cut into it a little bit. While the steaks rest and before we feast, H-E-B chef Charlotte Samuel's gonna show us how to make cornbread in a cast iron pan. And coming up next, we go inside of a brewery that's also serving up some of the best Tex-Mex barbecue that you can get your hands on. So don't go anywhere. Keep it tuned in right here on Texas Eats.
Hey everyone, I'm Scott. And I'm Charlotte. And tis the season, all of the football games are wrapping up and all commencing to the big game. The big game. So if you're entertaining, if you're going somewhere, it's always good to have a few extra recipes, a few extra tips, and something simple. And this is in that wheelhouse of something that's great to do if you're throwing a party or having a big, a big shindig. I think celebrate. this encompasses the football crowd. It yes. is beer yep. and cheese, yep. and it's melted. And it's IPA. Woohoo! All right, take us through it. All what right, we got? so in our pot, we have our aromatics um, and our beer, and we kind of cook that all down. It reduced it the beer a little so bit. Good. Cooking out the alcohol, totally safe for the kids You as well. added the um, evaporated milk, evaporated and then milk. now we're going to add in our shredded cheese, so what's thick all cut cheese. Over that? This is cornstarch. And so the cornstarch is going to help thicken it without having to make a roux, so it's not going to really separate. It's going to be great, all right? All right, so that and goes And then in. we're going to add in our green chilies. Green chilies. We did the whole can. I like the Just extra, the whole can. Yep, the do, whole do, thing. Do, do, Just okay. toss it all in there. And this is a mild green chili. If you want to do a half, a super, super hot one, you can. Yeah, go ahead. It's really, really simple. So we're just going to bring this. Uh, we'll turn up the heat a little bit. We'll let yeah. it whisk. And you, it needs to come up to a simmer for the cornstarch to activate. Exactly. And so we're yeah. using a Colby Jack cheese, which is really, really uh, a nice. There. And to see it. serve this with your favorite IPA, and for this and other recipes, log on to kset.com slash H-E-B. What's better than great barbecue and great beer? How about getting them both together in the same spot? That's what's happening over here at Weathered Souls Brewing Company. Andrew from South Barbecue and Kitchen has taken over their kitchen and he's cranking out some delicious food. And you know we gotta drink some beer while we're in there. Let's go check it out. Andrew is here with me, owner and pit master of South Barbecue and Kitchen. And actually, you've taken over the kitchen over here at Weathered Souls Brewery and you have some delicious food on the menu and I can't wait to try all of this, but Talk to me about this platter right here. This is a little bit of the barbecue items yes, plus some fun tacos, right? Prime certified Angus beef brisket. I've sliced off some of the uh, the fatty end for you there, the moist. Also with a couple little burn ends on the side because everybody loves those. Here, get a piece with me, man. Yeah, absolutely. Enjoy, yes, enjoy your product with me. Yeah, cheers, man. Cheers, I will, thank you. <laughs> mm, you can never get enough. <laughs> Dude, that's amazing. Thank you, thank you very much. The little burnt end parts are like mm. possibly the best part of a good brisket. I believe so. Mm. You really got to go low and slow to render all that fat in there and also develop that nice bark on the outside. It's like it, it you've got into almost a crystallized form. Yes, sir. The texture on this is perfect. Thank you. And the bark, it's a nice salty on the exterior, but when you go inside and you, you meet that with the unctuous flavor from that brisket, and of course, you got pickles and onions, because yeah, yeah. that's what you got to have with your barbecue. So homemade pickles and onions, and not to be overshadowed by the brisket, but the pulled pork, it's really nice as well. It's just got that really nice salty, fatty pork flavor. It's just all one piece, right? Yeah. I'm just good. <laughs> yeah, some it's people like kind of chop right? the pulled pork yeah. up, but we prefer to kind of pull it in long strands, kind of traditional and like the Carolina style. Mm. The brisket one here has got guacamole, our salsa verde, and the, and the chopped brisket. You have found the balance of Tex-Mex and barbecue, and you, this taco is absolutely amazing. The little guac that's on there, and that little salsa verde, yeah. that's That's my spicy, favorite thing on the menu. creamy. Yep. I want like 10 more of these yep. things. Absolutely delicious. And you said you're making all this in-house, right? The, the cheese? Yeah, everything except the tortilla chips. Whoa. Those are amazing nachos. Thank you, sir. And it's all about the cheese on that. Of course, your barbecue, it shines through, but with the tomatoes, the onions, that little pico the guy that you have on there, but then the cheese is just phenomenal. Mm, I you. want that on everything. Yeah. You can put that all, you just cover all this with that cheese. I'm yeah. gonna eat it all. And of course, every Sunday, you can come out here for yep. your brunch, and you're serving up items just like this waffle out here. That looks absolutely incredible. Yeah, yeah. Talk to me about this. This is a uh, blueberry waffle, Belgian style that we make with the batter. Then we smear a nice uh, house-made whipped apricot butter on top of the waffle. Um, hit it with some of these kind of like brulee or caramelized bananas that we do with the blowtorch, and then some homemade whipped cream, caramel sauce, and some walnuts. Sugar overlord for sure, but um, he controls the sugar universe. Oh, I give me that banana. Yeah, the banana is where it's at. Bro, bro. Thanks, man. What are you doing, bro? That's that it. It's so good. simple. So simple. Absolutely incredible. That rivals brunch spots that I've Thank been you, to. Man. You have just created right here in front of me. I'm tasting it right now. 
One of the best <laughs> waffle things I've ever had in my whole life. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Andrew, the barbecue is absolutely incredible. And of course, you're wrapping up this delicious dessert, but you can't be here at a brewery and not enjoy the beer. With me now is the man, the myth, the legend out here, the mad scientist, Marcus Baskerville. And you're creating some incredible brews out here. So what we have here is our Imperial Stout Cavernous chocolate, um, some different caramel characteristics in it. But this is basically what we use for a base for a lot of our uh, specialty beers um, with some of the heavy treated stouts. This, when you said caramel, that was the first word that came to my mind. It's so, it's nice and thick. It's a full bodied beer and it tastes like a meal. And it's mm -hmm. <laughs> very heavy. It's sure. very yeah. heavy. This is really good. Mm. Doppelbach basically is a double version of a Bach, but it's a heavier version with uh, lots of caramel, melanoid and malts, uh, heavy malts period within it, 10% uh, lager. So something different uh, since typically we're heavy on stouts and oh. IPAs. Well, that is very different. That is really good though. I mean, everything you guys do out here is always delicious, and I would almost dare say everything's a little creamy. You guys, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. You like to you you add it. It's like a special little touch you can only get when you come <laughs> out here to Weathered Souls. This is really good, and these are sipping beers. Yes. This is not come out here and like woo. This yeah, is actually so. come out here and enjoy a really solid beer. Both are amazing, and I'll tell you what, they would both go really well with all this delicious food that's being cranked out here as well. You guys are killing it. Keep doing your thing, man. Andrew, Marcus, you guys both rock. Cheers to you. Cheers. 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 Great food out here at Weathered Souls, and of course, great beer as well. Sunday brunches, right? Sunday brunch, yes, sir. That's where it's at. I'm gonna sip this and probably eat the rest of this. I need to eat that top. Next on Texas Eats, we go back in the kitchen with HEB to learn how to make cornbread in a cast iron pan. And coming up later on the show, we head inside of a food truck that's serving up some Midwest barbecue right here in Central Texas. So don't go anywhere. Keep it tuned in right here on Texas Eats. Welcome back to Texas Eats. We're with Charlotte, and she's gonna show us how to make cast iron cornbread. I'm super excited. Oh my God, it could be a meal. We have our cast iron skillet okay. heating, because we want to get our cast iron skillet hot so that when we pour in our batter, it creates that like a crust. crust. Yeah. So I've already measured out your ingredients. Okay. We have a little bit of flour with some um, baking powder in that, and that's gonna be our um, chemical leavener. So you can go ahead and add that to the bowl. Okay. The next thing we're going to add is gonna be a corn flour. If you wanted to make this completely gluten free, you would just add um, all corn flour instead of um, AP flour. This is actually um, grits, corn grits oh, or okay. um, polenta. And again, it goes back to that texture. So I like a little bit of bite into my, in my cornbread. And then to this, we're gonna add in, we're gonna add two eggs, um, about 10 tablespoons of butter, yeah. and then we're gonna use buttermilk. And buttermilk is key to this recipe because this is also gonna give us um, some flavor, but also more of that leavening, right? So add that in. Oh my goodness, this looks decadent. Right, it's so good. <laughs> and then we're gonna add a little bit of honey for sweetness and we're also gonna add some roasted corn and I went ahead and grilled this corn. That roasted corn is very, that's essential, right? Cause yes. that really brings out a lot yes. of those sugars. Right, look at you, chef. I know some that's things, so yeah, I know some do. things. And while you're doing that, I am going to get our hot skillet you really don't want to mix it that much? Is that a what it is? A spoon or a spatula is okay. perfect for that. Okay. It keeps you from over whisking or mixing, and it's, um, Ooh, that is hot. it's really hot. Look at that. Then we're going to add, I'm going to add a little bit of butter to this. Yeah, you are. Look at that. Oh, it's ready to go. See how hot that is? There's something special about butter in a hot pan, oh isn't it? Oh my god, the smell. Oh, hey, well, it's can talking we do to us. It, can we do it in slow mo? <laughs> Got to get all the goods out of there. You can see it, look how it's making that beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's talking to us. It it's is. saying it's something. Beautiful. It's saying that it's going to be eaten later. Eat this me. is eat. eat me. All right, I'm going to put this back in the oven, and I do about 22 minutes, 25 minutes, um, and then what I do is I shut my oven off, okay. and I just let it sit in there for a little while and cool a little bit in the oven, and then that crust develops, and then you could like brush a little bit of honey on top if you want. You could do all sorts of fun stuff. When you're talking about kicking off rodeo, doing it the right way, you gotta do some cast iron cornbread. That's the way you do it.
steaks are cooked perfectly, they're rested, you sliced them up ready to go, and Charlotte, you have the cast iron cornbread right out the oven, got the butter on top, Butter's ready on. to rot. You guys, yeah, everything's ready. Go. To get these recipes, of course, head on over to kstat.com slash Texas Eats. We have it all right there for you. And now, it's time to try it. Oh, thank you. Coming up next on Texas Eats, we head inside of a food truck that's serving up some Midwest barbecue right here in Central Texas. So don't go anywhere. Keep it tuned in right here on Texas Eats. This is everything delicious about Midwest barbecue in a cup. Get that, that's crazy, right? We're here at Fort Sam Houston to go inside of a food truck that's serving up some killer Midwest barbecue unlike anything else you can get in Texas. Let's go inside the Purple Pig Barbecue Food Truck. We're now here with Demetric Heron. He is the co-owner and pit master out here at the Purple Pig Barbecue Food Truck. Uh, we started about four years ago uh, here on Fort Sam Houston. Actually, we started off in a 10 by 20 tent right here in the same location. That's so cool. They go from a, a tent to a trailer to a food truck. Now you have this Purple Pig empire. Now you're gone, right? <laughs> 26 years in the United States Army. Ooh, thank you for your service. That's, <laughs> thank a, you. that's a long time. 26 years doing anything is a long time. But the military, that's, that's great, man. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. And your wife as well? Yes, retired? Yeah, my wife is retired uh, Air Force. Now you're just giving back to the community that you were a part of. A part of. Exactly. That is so cool. Well, our business is a family-owned business. Myself, my wife, and um, my sons and my daughter. Well, we do a Midwest-style barbecue with a Texas twist. What is our specialty is rib tips. Nice, tasty uh, piece of meat uh, from, uh, from the uh, end of the rib. So these are the piggy tips that you can get out here at the Purple Pig Barbecue Food Truck. Now check this out. I'm actually coming prepared. I got a fork in my pocket. So you said this is the end of a rib. Got some of the fat on there. You got some barbecue sauce. Is this a special house-made barbecue sauce yes, as well? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm excited. Don't mind me. I'm just going to go in for it. <laughs> That's incredible. All right. That's real good. It's everything you love about a rib, but put into a really bite-sized edible version. You don't have to worry about the bone. I love that. And there's a little bit of gristle in there. So you're getting some of that little texture from there as well. That barbecue sauce is phenomenal though. The sweetness is playing really, really well with the salty flavor. It's a really good balance of everything. This is, this is phenomenal. I'm gonna have another bite. And you're serving it with a piece of bread. Yeah. Is there any secret you can share with people at home how they can do really good barbecue? Uh, just take your time. Take your time. Take your time. Low and slow. Any kind of, what kind of wood do you use? Uh, we use pecan wood. Hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Something not typical to Texas barbecue is definitely the focus on pork items, which you're going to find more in the Midwest. And that's what they're serving up out here with their piggy tips. It's the rib tips that you can get only at this food truck. And it's all the fat flavor that you get on the edge of a rib. A little bit of gristle in there. It's all the texture and the flavor that you want from a rib. But in this little fork tender bite sized pieces covered in this Midwest barbecue sauce. And you can get it mild or spicy. I'll tell you what, though, you get this spicy, change your life, it's delicious. Now, right here, this is the barbecue parfait. You can only get it out here at the Purple Pig Barbecue Food Truck. You got a lot going on. Yes, we do. Well, it's, uh, we call it again, barbecue parfait. So it's layered, uh, starting from the bottom, house baked beans, baked macaroni and cheese. The next layer is our pulled pork. Uh, with our barbecue sauce, we have three flavors of barbecue sauce, sweet, mild, or hot, so you get your own flavor to it and topped with our uh, potato salad and our slaw. Oh my God, this is everything you want from barbecue in one cup. Why serve it like this? What gave you this idea? Well, doing the festivals and, uh, you know, large events and things like that, you know, sometimes it's kind of hard to, you know, serve a full plate. I got some of the slaw, some of the potato salad, a little bit of the pulled pork and the barbecue sauce. <laughs> Besides everything on the bottom, this is, this is what you want in one bite. I love that slaw. I would drink this if y'all if y'all wouldn't judge me. The possibilities there. It's layers of potato salad, mac and cheese, the coleslaw, the pulled pork, the barbecue sauce, everything just melding together and getting married to all those flavors. And so it's a vinegar bite, it's fatty, it's cheesy, the ultimate barbecue bite.
spot on today's barbecue episode is in Old Town Holotus. This locally popular barbecue spot started as a food truck. Now, they're one of the top rated barbecue spots in the state. Let's go inside, be daddy's barbecue. BR opened the joint four years ago in Old Town Holotus, serving up favorite barbecue items that people have come to love from his food truck he started seven years ago. I have been barbecuing for a living for seven years, been barbecuing for fun my whole life. They're serving up brisket, ribs, sausage, outstanding sides, and a brisket grilled cheese sandwich. This whole wall barbecue joint is making some of the best barbecue you can get anywhere around Military City USA. You got the brisket, the turkey, sausage, all the ribs here as well, mac and cheese, coleslaw, beans, and the cream corn. Everything here has its own unique flavor, including a hint of spice inside of the cream corn that makes it unlike anything else. Now this is what I actually, this is what I came here for. This monster is one of the ribs that they have out here, and it's actually been written up in Texas Monthly Magazine and it is worth the drive. This is the place to come to. There's a huge outdoor area where you can bring the kids. This is one of the best barbecue spots that nobody knows about in this area. Absolutely fantastic. We have a huge outdoor backyard, covered patio, play area for the kids. During the spring and summer on Saturday nights, we'll run live music. It's just a family-friendly environment. Parents can come and have a beer or two. Backyard's fenced so it's secure. Kids play on the playscape, run around the yard, do all that bit. And once you come, you'll come back again, I promise you. Thank you for watching today's episode of Texas Eats All About Barbecue. And don't forget to tune in to Texas Eats every Saturday at 10 a.m. right here on KSAT 12. That's a good one. Share those great weather pictures using KSAT's Weather Authority app. Now, right in the menu, you can access KSAT Connect, our picture and video sharing app. Post that pic, maybe I'll use it in my forecast. KSAT's Weather Authority app, now with KSAT Connect. Hit yourself a ride on the expanded full color wagon train. We got some more miles to make today. Weekdays at 2.30 p.m. on Meet TV San Antonio. Get ready. Ready, everyone, here come the Longhorns! Cattle and Cowboys are taking over the streets of downtown San Antonio, bringing the Old West back to Texas. Grab your boots. KSAT 12 is hosting a hoedown. We're celebrating rodeo season with a kickoff party like you have never seen before. And they've got the best beans, the most mouth-watering carne guisada. The Vaquero Cook-Off is the ultimate face-off between teams of Cowboy Cooks it's Western Heritage Weekend. Let's, Let's rodeo, rodeo San Antonio. Live from downtown San Antonio, the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. SA Live coverage powered by the all new 2020 Silverado HD. This is where the Old West makes its return to the Alamo City. Welcome to the 2020 Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive the official kickoff to the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. And good morning, everyone. I'm Mike Osterhage. And I'm Fiona Gorostiza. Right now, a huge herd of cattle is being released onto Houston Street, and they're going to make their way right through the heart of the Alamo City. These gentle giants carry with them the rich heritage and tradition of the Lone Star State, and that's what we are honoring today. And we are live right here on Houston Street, right where the parade is going to be going through in the cattle drive at the corner of Jefferson. And while we wait for all those longhorns and sheep and everything. Look at the crowd that is here on this beautiful day. I think they are ready to rodeo and it's like living history is all just like it used to be back in the 1800s around here. Oh yes, and they can't we can't wait to show you what this year has to offer. The Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive features dozens of decorated wagons dating as far back as the late 1800s. The parade was started 13 years ago. It celebrates the time in history before railroads came to Texas. Historic cattle drives would often start here in San Antonio and the surrounding area and then head north and west across the United States. Those were the true days of the Old West. The first modern cattle drive consisted of 35 Longhorn. Today, we've got more than 60, followed by sheep, horses, carriages, buggies, cowboys, dancers, and bands, 
all continuing the story of who we are as Texans. It is exciting, and let's take you right in the middle of the action right now. David Elder is back there with all those longhorns and cattle right behind him. Yes, all right. David, don't <laughs> slow down. Just keep moving. It is. I know. <laughs> yeah, I will not slow down. Actually, keep going, y'all. can creep up a little bit. We got a truck right here holding up some of our people right here. But you guys, it's happening. It's going down. The cattle are walking right behind us. And with me right now is Dr. Kimball. This is the Kimball cattle that are right behind us right here. But talk to me about the process of getting the cattle here and what it means to be a part of this event. Well, it takes me 10 days to go ahead and go out to every one of our pastures and bring these cattle up into a pen and get them collated out and separated out so they're all docile, calm cattle, which you see behind me walking, to make sure this is a good, secure, safe parade. Safe parade, that's a big important one. So that's what it has to be. And for people who don't really know too much about Longhorns, you had a really brief history lesson for me earlier, but you had said they had actually come, the Spanish brought them over. Like Columbus actually helped bring over what is the original kind of cattle that created the Longhorn, right? Yes, and uh, they're actually African bred cattle. Um, and in 1400, they were in, moved into Spain, and Christopher Columbus brought them over to the island of San Domingo. Then they actually got over to uh, the southern part of the United States into Mexico. And then they spread all over the place, up to Nebraska, all over Texas, hundreds of thousands of longhorn cattle. And they have helped fuel the soldiers that have fought in wars all across centuries, right? I mean, this really, they are a sustainable source of protein. They're a lean protein. And they helped save the United States a couple of times, right? Uh, yes, they have. In, in fact, they actually uh, took over from the buffalo when the uh, buffalo were killed out. The longhorns got to be propagated out to be the biggest beef producing uh, product that there was that they could feed the United States and the Confederate Army and all of the soldiers that were in the uh, early Americas. And the Battle of the Alamo. Yes, the Battle of the Alamo. Which we're just walk. So these guys are their ancestors actually helped feed the soldiers that were fighting at the Battle of the Alamo. Just cool stuff. Really cool history that is tied to this animal and a big part of kicking off the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. I mean, it's 2020. It's a new decade, new fun, all these kinds of events going on. Y'all doing good? Oh, they're all, everybody's chill right now. Everybody's like, yeah, we're okay. They're all full of, of all kinds of food. I saw people eating like different tacos and stuff out here. But look at this. How many cattle are right behind us? They got 70 head of Texas Longhorns. 70 right behind us. And there's little ones and there's big ones, right? Yes. <laughs> and what are some of the longest horns that you have there on the ranch? Uh, over 120 inches. 120 inches. That's wild. And they look like the actual, when you think of a longhorn, like UT, right? Uh, yes, yeah, some of them are like UT and some are called a Texas twist. Like they have long corkscrews out both sides. That is incredible. Dr. Kimball, thank you so much. Thank you, and sir. thank you for bringing the cattle out here and helping us have such an amazing event. Gentlemen. We're going to toss it back there to Mike and Fiona at the front of the parade. We're coming at you guys. Get ready. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's slowly moving closer. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Can't see him yet. Won't be long, though, when he's coming up Houston Street there. Oh uh, Well, they still have a long way to go before they reach the end of the parade, and the route starts near I-35 and Houston Street, works its way through the streets of downtown, and ends near La Vieta. Now, there is a construction detour near the San Pedro Creek Project this year. Yep. Now, along the way and toward the end of the parade, they're going to pass one heck of a hoedown. The Case Acquarel is happening at the Pavilion by Hilton on South Alamo. It is a huge parade watch party and rodeo kickoff celebration. And that is, of course, where our Jen Tobias Strusky is. Jen is wrangling up all sorts of fun there at the KSAT Corral. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yes, hello there, guys. We are having a great time. This is the KSAT Corral. Behind me, you can see there's lots of insiders here. There are some waiting in line for some food. Check out this, what I've got here. This is Pan de Campo. They made it earlier. We were live in GMSA, and now I get to eat it. But I may share it. I don't know. We're going to walk this way and talk to some of the insiders. I've got Ralph and Rose. Hi there. So you're having a good time today? Oh, having a great time. What's your favorite part about being here in the inside? Uh, I think it's just, uh, uh, it's been a beautiful day and hanging out with the family and stuff, bringing the family. So tell me who you have here. I have my grandson, Eli, and my granddaughter, Penelope. So, and my Kay wife, Roseanne. And Roseanne, uh, you guys are KSAT devoted watches, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so are you having fun? You got something to eat too? We did, it was great. Yes, right. it was so good. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoy your time. And, you know, we said Case at Insiders, another thing they get to do is see the uh, faces here. Let's come share. Maybe I'll share. Hey, guys. Here we go. I'm going to share. So this is Pan de Campo. This is from the Mexican vaqueros used to eat it, Pan de Campo. 
and it's uh, made with the good stuff, Manteca. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. Can we, can are, we take a minute? Yeah, are you guys having fun? Oh my gosh, so much fun. We have met so many of our fabulous KSAT viewers and taken so many pictures and heard the best stories. This has been a fabulous day. So this is the first year that we've done something like this. Why do you think it's so important, Steve? I mean, you get to come and meet our viewers, it's so awesome. Well, that's the best part. I mean, the best part is that we're all together. We're all having fun. You know, we, this isn't anything that's in this world that everything's usually so serious and, you know, there's a lot going on. It's nice just to be with people yep. that, you know, in our case at viewers. Yeah. I mean, all of that is great. And I get to see people that I haven't seen in a while, I like know. Leslie, you know, I mean, I never get to see her. And Jen. <laughs> and oh, from oh, somewhere. this guy. Hi. Yeah, Paul Venema, <laughs> Mark, Mark Austin. Uh, it's great. It's Hi, Paul. Great that he's and we got there. Tiffany, Tiffany our, Alicia. Alicia. All right, how is it? It's really good. Okay. Really well, they're, they're telling me I got to wrap up now. So, Aww. sorry, you guys are missing out on the fun, but uh, I won't rub it in. You guys eat that. And uh, back to you. We're gonna check back in. There's a bull I might get on over there. There's a motorcycle. Like I said, lots of fun. Back to you guys. Okay, I know it's fun down there, and it looks like a lot of fun. You better save some of the biscuits and gravy and everything else yes. for us. So don't have too much fun with the food <laughs> yet. So, you know, so we're, we're going to hopefully get the mosey on down there at the end of the parade. Mm -hmm. Check out all the fun Catch and get the biscuits and gravy. You know, it takes a whole lot of people to put on the incredible celebrations, and we want to give a huge thanks to the all-new 2020 Silverado HD for making this live coverage possible. Now, before the cattle arrive and clear us out of here, we do have some business to take care of. We have some free stuff to give away and some fabulous contestants ready to play. Oh, yes. Are you All ready? Right. Are you ready? Your first name is? Elijah. Elijah. And how old are you? Seven. Seven. Are you ready for your first question? Yes. You're playing for some, some tickets. All right. Okay. Here we go. Okay. What animal do children ride during the mutton busting rodeo event? Um, bah. Bah. Sheep? Yes! yes! Oh my Yay! gosh, yes, sheep! Congratulations! Yay! All right! Okay, and your name? Dion. Dion? Okay, how old are you? Nine. Nine. All right, are you ready, ready? to play? Mm -hmm. Here we go. What animal does someone ride in the barrel racing rodeo event? A horse. Yes! Woo! Very nice. Okay, nicely done. Your name? Here. What was it? Blake. Blake, and how old are you? Ten. Ten. All right, he's ready to play. I know okay. Blake's ready. True or false? Keith Urban is performing at this year's rodeo. True. 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 All yes. right. All right. And Here you your, go. your first name? Mia. Mia. Okay. How old are you? Five. Five. All right. She's ready. Okay. Mm -hmm. Give us your best yeehaw. Yeehaw. Yeah, Yay! Right. <laughs> Very that nice job, fantastic. Mia. Congratulations. Your first name? Martin. Martin. All right. How old are you? Nine. Nine. All right. Martin is ready to play. Okay. What kind of cookie do the pigs get as a reward in the pig races? Uh, it's that one you twist apart and eat the cream out of the middle of it? Oh, um, uh, Oreo. Yes, yes you did. correct. Congratulations. Fantastic. Okay. You did Excellent, great. excellent job, everybody. Let's excellent hear from job. All, Yay. all right, well, we are getting closer to the big moment when the Longhorns arrive. We're going to be checking in at the Vaquero Cookoff and the KSAT Corral. There's a lot happening today, and of course, we are just getting started. Yep, and the Longhorns are somewhere down there. We are going to take a quick break, but when we come back, the 2020 Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive is going to be in full swing, so don't go anywhere. Back to the 2020 Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive SA Live coverage is powered by the all new 2020 Silverado HD. Well, we are all anxiously waiting dozens of Longhorn cattle to come right down Houston Street, of course, and get this parade really started. We've been told they're about three blocks away, just made the turn back on to Houston Street floors after that little uh, detour for construction. Yeah. So they are coming. Don't hear him yet, though. <laughs> so another part of this Western Heritage Weekend is the Vaquero Cook-Off, and it is a culinary cowboy competition. <laughs> I like the alliteration with that. So, our Jen Tobias Trusky is out there live to tell us all about what's happening and all the different categories they're competing in. You get all the good, good food job. today, don't you, Jen? You're right on. You know, I'm not sorry, guys. <laughs> Yes, 
So here we got some borracho beans. I got Tim with me. What is the secret to good borracho beans? Good borracho beans is getting up early and getting the beer ready to go in the borracho beans. And it's the bacon and the onions and a lot of care and they come out beautiful. So that's the difference between borracho and charro? Yes, yes. Good beer in the borracho and it makes them even better. I yes. think I'm going to start sticking to borracho now yeah, that I know that. Right. That's right. And that's you guys right. won yesterday? Yeah, we took second prize yesterday and then tonight we're going to go after the first prize. Fries. Okay, so yes. you're hard at work. Yes, I got yeah. Richard back here and working uh, on, tell me what you're working on. Making on menudo. So we're cleaning the menudo right now and trimming it and getting the better cuts for the judge side. And then the other cuts are going into what we're giving away to all the guests that are here. And what is the secret to some good menudo? Because you guys know your stuff. Come on, besides clean, dry, then you need to come over here. And this is the secret right here, okay. the broth. So these are pig's feet with all the spices and vegetables. So we're cooking that separate. We'll strain it and then put it with the broth. So the broth's clear uh -huh. and has all the flavor of the pig's feet. People don't like seeing them. Most of them don't. Okay. So, but the flavor is so rich and it makes all the difference in the world. What is the history, if you can tell me, uh, behind Menudo? Because I know in my family it brings us all together. Tell me a little bit about okay, what well, you the like. The history is because it's the Vaqueros. South Texas, and it's the merging of Mexican cowboys and your traditional Western cowboys. Out in the wilderness, out in the country, they waste nothing. So they had to figure out how you can make tripe, which is the lining of the milk bladders, taste good, utilize it. The pig's feet, no one really did anything with them. So when they merged them together with spices and onions and cooked it real slow, it ended up being a stew slash soup. That's how you got menudo. Yeah, I never knew this. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> and you told me I better start learning, right? Pass, yeah, you pass, pass it down. Pass it down. Okay. Okay. And, oh. you, and, and what else do you guys have cooking here? Because I want to okay, know. We have carne asada going on okay. right now. We have the borracho beans, okay. and the competition will turn those in at two. Okay. The carne asada will turn in at four, and the menudo is at six. So do you have any carne asada ready right now? Not right it's, now, but come okay. back okay. in one hour. Once I get this on, then that's what we're starting next. Okay. You're going to keep working on that. Yes. So what is the secret, Tim? Last year, you guys did pretty good. We right? did really good last year. We took first place a lot, and this year we're going to probably do it again. I'm telling you. We're just happy, just a lot of care in the food, okay, and it all this. goes Look good. at this. Look at these borracho I mean, beans. I think our, our producer, Nicole, got to try some. How yeah. are they? They're good, right? See, so, yeah. And then just, so just keep the loving care of the stuff, and everything's going great. All yes. right. Well, there's other teams over here. I have to ask, how's the rivalry between the teams I here? tell you, they're, they're super people and we just have a good time, a really good time. Okay, so it's all it's good all and fun. Good, fun and happiness, yeah, we're okay. having a good time. All right, let's pour some more of these. Yeah. Yeah. Fun, unless we lose. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, no hard feelings until yeah. you lose. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so the borracho beans, and I know, what's the name of your team? That's the Black Typhers Catering. Okay, and we have team 210 is over there. There's music out here There's as everything. well. And and everybody's just working hard. I got, I think the Rob Sizzle over there. I'm gonna walk over there. Thank you guys. And so you guys can see there's a good time out here. Everyone's here, it's family friendly. I got Rob Sizzle over here. Misael, Misael over here. And we're having a good old time. So uh, I'm gonna send it back to you guys. <laughs> he lost me. I'm sorry, I'm exploring. Back to you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jen. And we are now seeing the early stages of the parade coming by. We just had the uh, East Central FFA 4-H come by. They were carrying the banner that is basically leading off the parade. There's the sign right now that is talking about the uh, Kimball cattle coming. And they're still back there just a ways, but they're definitely on their way. There we see Kimball Cattle Company from... Carn City, Texas, and they're way off in the distance, leading the way are all of those 70 head of Longhorn cattle. You know, and remember, Dr. Kimball was on our show not, to, you know, just the other day. Right. You know, and was talking about just getting to do this tradition year after year, and that it's an emotional moment when he goes by the Alamo with all that cattle, just to be such a part of history. And even, he said, to walk along Houston Tree like this and see all the people that come out here and truly appreciate what this means and truly appreciate the history of the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. Yes, okay, and just looking at the kids' faces, he says, when 
you know, they see the cowboys and the cowgirls and they just really take it all in and it could be the first time for some of the little ones, you know, really seeing this in person. Even we've been doing it so many years now and watching those Longhorns come by here, they are definitely impressive and there they all are. Some of them, what was interesting too, they their horns grow at different rates. Mm -hmm. And there was one that was on the show the other day that he had on last year at this time. And there's almost like growth rings because they slow down growing and they grow very quickly. And the one that was on the show, his horns grew about 17 to 18 inches just in one year. Then when they get older, they don't grow quite as quickly. And uh, they can be incredibly precise with their horns. I didn't know that they can literally just get a tick off themselves with the tip of their horn and know exactly where, where to find it. Boom. Yeah, you gone. would think if they were going through an, an entryway, a gate, something like that, that would have to be as wide as their horns. All they need to do is get through a space that is wide as their shoulders and hips, and they can turn their heads sideways enough to get those horns going long ways, if you will, and they can get through just like that. But he had to load them up about, oh, five o'clock in the morning, 70 head of longhorn cattle, and he actually had to, they don't like to go into dark spaces like that, and he had to yeah. put up a bunch of big floodlights and everything like that to get them all in there, but there it is. I mean, this is, except for the uh, the pavers on the street, this is what it would have looked like 100, 150 years ago, 200 years ago, as these, these longhorns are being brought into town, maybe heading out on the trail, maybe coming into market. And there they are. And you can see some of the little ones too. Oh, so incredibly cute. And of course, their horns and hooves made out of the same material. Yes, indeed they are. As they are approaching, we uh, are, you know, there's a lot of changes going on this year. This is the official start of the rodeo. And one thing that has changed is the kind of the layout of the grounds. You know, the, the carnival has always been kind of in that, that one little corner right down there right by Houston Street. That's now on the other side of the AT&T Center, so they've got a little bit more spread out. Uh, they also have the, the different stages, not the ones obviously inside with the headline performers, and they are dedicated stages. So if you want to hear just some nice, easygoing music, right. that's going to be always on one stage. If you want to hear some rock, that's going to be on another stage. They have also, by the way, uh, Mutton Bustin. That's one of the biggest events, and... That is going to be available to just about everybody. There's dedicated mutton busting, and everybody gets to give it a try. It's oh, little kids. Look at that. They're right behind us right now. The Longhorns have arrived here as they approach the corner of Houston and Presa. That is always just such a beautiful sight to see with those Longhorns like that. Okay, and of course... Kimball Cattle has been in operation since 1982 with a herd of over 200 Texas Longhorn cattle, and they've won hundreds of awards for their Longhorns. The Kimballs are proud to have bred and raised eight-time world and international grand champion Texas Longhorn trophy steer. His name was Wow. And in honor of Wow, the Kimballs built Wow's Longhorn Museum in downtown Carn City. Dr. Scott Kimball and Mr. Sean O'Brien are walking with Longhorns today. Of course, David Elder just interviewed Dr. Kimball. And here they all are. And there's, look at the little cowgirl. I don't know if we can see her right in front, but she's Hi. up there in the saddle. Oh, I love and hat. <laughs> there she is. Look at that cute with that pink trim. Hello, Dr. Kimball. Good to see you. <laughs> and uh, you better scooch over just a little bit because there's some very, very long horns that almost get, get you, Fiona. <laughs> Thanks for having my six. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> 60, uh, 70 head of cattle making their way now right down Houston Street. Here in the clop of the hooves, right down on Houston. All right, coming up behind them, of course, is the Texas Hill Country Stock Dog Association. And there are 60 sheep with three goats. Now there, you're gonna see three dogs. Cage is nine years old, and he was previously owned by Joanne Noble. Joanne and her dogs had won numerous herding trials throughout the state of Texas and beyond. And they, today they are walking in honor of her she is one of the founding members of the Texas Hill Country Stock Dog Association who passed away 
in 2017. The Texas Hill Country Stock Dog Association continues her passion of encouraging new people and dogs who are starting in their careers in herding. Okay, and Cage is, of course, the black and white border collie. We visited their ranch recently, and, you know, I got to see him in action, and he's got some pretty fancy footwork. It is absolutely incredible at just how clever and intelligent these dogs are. The other two dogs you see is Junebug, who's 11 years old, and Rascal, who's 7 years old. And it's always great to watch them kind of work in a pack. You know, mm -hmm. one will be the leader, and a couple other ones kind of herd them all together, and... Yeah, they are amazing, amazing animals. The United States Marine Corps Mounted Color Guard is what you're looking at right now. They, uh, they've re represented the Marine Corps in events across the U.S. for the last 53 years. It is absolutely beautiful to see them on horseback. This is the last remaining Mounted Color Guard with the Marine Corps. And the Marine Corps are riding wild Palomino Mustangs adopted from the Bureau of Land Management's Adopt the Horse program. Every Mustang has been carefully selected for their Palomino color and disposition. The horses and Marines train together weekly to maintain their performance readiness. The Mounted Color Guard strives to maintain its traditions and standards of excellence, fitting their storied past. And it's a privilege of every Marine who has been given the opportunity to be a part of its legacy. Staff Sergeant Esteban Warega is the staff non-commissioned officer in charge of the Mounted Color Guard, and this unit is stationed at Marine Corps Logistics Base in Barstow, California. It's an honor for the Marines seen before you to be at the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive, and it is quite a sight to see. All right, we'll be right back with more from the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. SA Live's coverage brought to you by the all-new 2020 Silverado HD. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive SA Live. The coverage is powered by the all new 2020 Silverado HD. And we're not clowning around. Well, yeah, we are clowning around. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. There are the rodeo clowns, of course. And then here comes the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo, also known as the San Antonio Livestock Exposition or Sale. Yeah, and these are the clowns that help represent that. The success of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo is attributed to more than 6,000 volunteers who give countless hours to the organization. They are a driving force to support the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo Mission, a volunteer organization that emphasizes agriculture and education to develop the youth of Texas. And with the community donor and volunteer support, the organization has donated... And this is one of those numbers that is almost unbelievable. 100, donated more than $186 million to the youth of Texas through scholarships, grants, endowments, and junior livestock auctions. And all the folks that put together not only this cattle drive and parade and the entire stock show and rodeo, but boy, they do one heck of a fantastic job each and every year. So hats off to all of those folks. And yeah. hats off to all the folks that are out here. Here's another uh, shot of cattle cam. And the cattle were just going past the Alamo. That's right downtown mm -hmm. on Alamo Street, mm -hmm. I believe. And the Alamo would be on the right side of your screen. And you this know, is one thing I think everyone's looking forward to also with this rodeo is the fabulous concerts that are going to be happening. I know that tonight, country singer Cody Johnson's going to perform. Tomorrow is, of course, Sammy Hager. And then even February 8th, Dustin Lynch, February 9th, Aaron Watson, February 10th, Chris Young. So all sorts of fun to be had. We're going to have more from the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive right after this. <laughs> 